I'm going to unmute myself and start again. <laughs> so I'm saying beautiful session tonight. We have Frédéric Dezosier, Global VIP Brand Ambassador of Camus Cognac. And I'm so excited. Uh, Camus is a prestigious brand, top five, still family owned. And then I have a beautiful range of cognac. So I know many cognac lovers in Australia anticipate this online session tonight. Welcome, Frédéric. How are you doing? Thank you, Alex. Uh, thank you. And uh, I'm very well. And uh, you see, I'm already with the cognac. So I'm ready. Already. Uh, and, good and to see to you. Uh, where, where are you? Mm. Alors, where I am? What? I am in a paradise. Yes. And the paradise is the place uh, where you can find the more prestigious, the more rare cognac, and the more old too. Uh, so this place is uh, perfectly adapted today. So I am, we are in a paradise. Yes. So welcome to our paradise. That's right. We are all in a Camus paradise. It's a beautiful uh, setup that you have. I really appreciate you take the time to come tonight and meet with uh, all the cognac lovers in Australia and in the world as well, because I'm expecting views from all over the world. It's a pleasure. Again, it's a pleasure. And I hope we will have a good, uh, good time for one hour. I think it's one hour, no? Yes, it's one hour. One hour, that's right. Uh, so the, 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 how are we going to go about it? We're going to talk a bit about Camus and then um, introduce the range, Camus range. It's interactive session, so please, the viewer, ask question and we will relay the question to Frédéric, okay? And then um, we're going to announce the, the winner as well of the giveaway. So stay tuned. Do you want to... Frédéric, uh, get started. I see you have a map behind you of cognac, beautiful cognac. Um, yes. I hope uh, I'll be there soon again. When travel low, we can visit you. Tell us a bit more what's happening there. Well, so s s some word, some word to, to remind uh, where we are. That's very important. The crew. Uh, so this, the is, this is the map. This, this is the map of uh, our cognac area. Uh, Allez, the total of the superficy is 1 million hectares, and in this 1 million hectares, there is only 81,000 planted. Uh, this area is divided in six different crus, mm -hmm. uh, which are the Grand Champagne, Petit Champagne, Borderie, Pain Bois, Bon Bois, and Bois à Terroir. Uh, first, I would like to clarify something. Uh, okay. Maybe some, some uh, of, uh, of you uh, heard that there is a classification uh, that means the Grand Champagne is the best, the Petit Champagne, etc. Et uh, yes, this please go ahead with this. Yes, but this information, it's a, I'm sorry, but it's a wrong information. Uh, I like that. Is, no, there is no rules uh, in Cognac area uh, for the classification, for a hierarchic classification. Uh, um, Tell them. The, reason, the, the main reason is because the distance and uh, by definition, the cognac is a blend product. So there is no classification. Uh, and uh, that's very important to understand and have your uh, own opinion because you know what is the best cognac, except that can be, of course, but the best <laughs> cognac is the cognac the consumer prefer. That's the right classification. Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah, I've, I've, I've heard that and I know there was a kind of a war before between the different cognac grower because some people, they were saying, uh, yeah, of course, Grand Champagne is the is the best one. And then people from Bonbois, Fembois, they got upset. Uh, but because actually you can find a really good cognac in, if you know where to find them. And, and, and then, uh, so it's, is the expression of the terroir, and maybe it is a taste different than what people are, are used to, and each cognac has its own expression. So I'm totally with you. 
people should not get stuck with, and, and like, we're going to go to the border after, but actually the border sometimes is, the, the, the cognac is even more expensive than the, the Grand Champagne, right? Someone is asking, I uh, got a question, is the, what do we say Grand Cru, Grand Cru? I never... Grand Cru, uh, yeah. Grand Cru uh, doesn't exist Grand Cru, it's a Grand Champagne. Yeah, Champagne. I, Grand, Grand Champagne. Champagne. Uh, Grand Champagne, alors Grand, Grand is large, and Champagne means, uh, from the Latin word, comes from the Latin word, Campagnan, uh, it's chalk, chalky soil. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the origin is a large, uh, large uh, area of chalky, and petit is a small, yeah. etc. Uh, but your question is this question is interesting because it's allowed me to to talk about the uh, the, the, the area of bordery. Uh, old area have the geologic origin. Only yes. the bordery is having historical origin. Uh, that means that uh, on the 15th and 16th century, the bordery was the only place where the wine was produced. There was no wine in another area. There was wine only here in the bordery. Oh, okay. So I didn't know that. Uh, yes, it is that's very important because that means when you drink a glass of cognac, you mm. drink the origin of the cognac. That's very important. Bordery, it's, um, it's a beautiful uh, appellation. The Bordery, one of my favorites, is very special. And especially because my grandma is from the Bordery in Bury. So it's always a bit emotional. And I think that's what we want to do when we drink cognac. We want to get up the emo emotion. It's about having creating good emotion in a, in a consumer. He's thinking about the, uh, who has been making this cognac, the farmer. Uh, and then how it's being made, the people thinking ahead of time, the distillation, all, the, all these people uh, putting their heart and soul, the distillation as well into the, the, the making the cognac. And then we have uh, the, the chance to, to have those products uh, now with us here. And, and it's also something, uh, it's a very poetic uh, area. Uh, there is 50%, 50% of uh, forest and 50% of vineyard. It's very poetic area. It's a marvelous area. I'm, I agree with you. It's, uh, it's the best uh, in terms of uh, uh, story and uh, medicine, culture. And, yes. Mm. So, so do you, where is the Ile Doré, the fine island Ile Doré? Because we, we might get a, a, you can talk a, a bit more about this crew. Where is it on the map for people? And then there might be a good opportunity to get started with uh, the, the first Yes. Alors, so for that, we have to go uh, 120 kilometers All right. and go to the island of the Ile de Ré. You see on the map where I am? Yes. Okay, so we are in the Bois Terroir from the bordery, which is exactly the center, I would tell the epicenter, to the Ile de Ré, there is a range 120 kilometers. And here on Ile de Ré, there mm -hmm. is only one company who produces cognac, it is Camus. Oh. This cognac is come from Ile de Ré, 100% from Ile de Ré. From A to Z, it's come from Ile de Ré. Okay, the Ile de Ré, what is so special about uh, ah. the Ile de Ré? Alors, what how, is... how it is influencing, because uh, if you can perhaps talk a bit uh, more about you know like the the climate and then the atmosphere and then how it's affecting the wine growing the aging the, how it's aging in oak barrel all the all this environment which influence the taste of uh, the cognac i'm gonna pour it now to let it breathe a bit first first imagine you are in harvest just before the you are in the vineyard just before the harvesting time on Ile de Ré. You walk in a vineyard, then you take a, a berries and you eat, you would be surprised. It's lighty, salty. And not only that, scientifically, it's proved that the grapes 
on Ile Ré is 10 times more IOD than on the mainland. So this is the first parameter. Alors, from where come this uh, salty character? Of course, the influence of the climate. Because you have to imagine the Ile de Ré not in a time of a holiday place with the sun. No, no, Ile de Ré is like that, of course, but it's mm -hmm. also rain, wind. So all these elements uh, give this mm, IOD character and IOD uh, climate. So there is a direct influence on the grapes. So we wanted and we decided to preserve this IOD character. So mm -hmm. the winemaking is a little bit different than on the mainland, the distillation too, and the aging too. I can smell actually oh. when you're talking. Yes, the, the, the salty. Can we put our nose on the glass? Yes, please walk us through what you smell for us. Alors, shall I suggest something? It's uh, something I do with our cognac. I think we are the only to do that. Uh, at the time of the, of the nose, you put your nose, okay, and slowly smell. In the same time, open your mouth and mm. uh, breathe some air in the same time like the nose. It depending uh, the size you will open your nose, you will see there is a different aroma coming. Fruity. Yeah, you got That's a very good way to, uh, to discover a Camus Cognac, really. And here, the first nose, the first nose is what? The first nose is a freshness. Mm. Il de Ré is a kind of cognac who don't want to become old. He want to give the powerful, the freshness, the yes. floriness also, because you can get, the, you know, the, the white flower, the white flower uh, in, uh, in June, who are in the, in, the, in the vineyard, they are here. The IOD character is there, light, lightly, but it is there. So would you say it's a, you, usually when it's a live uh, floral cognac, is, is this uh, categorized as a, a VSOP, this one perhaps? I can't see any, uh, uh, tell me. It's yes, difficult, it's a... to, to, it's difficult <laughs> to, to put a classification because uh, that's why, that's why there is no VS, no VSOP, no VSOP. Yeah. But because it's a, right. I would tell it's a technical cognac. It's a technical cognac. So uh, the, the references are not the same as mm, another. I know what you mean. Because yeah. people would have expectation when they, it's a VSOP or EXO, they have expectation. But this one is a technical cognac that is been uh, in a special area. So you can really get this, the saltiness, a bit iodine, and very fresh and lively. Right? Yes. And then, um, what should we, um, I can't wait to try it. <laughs> Please try it. Mm. So you see, the test confirm the nose. Freshness, it's very light also, very light. Mm -hmm. uh, the powerful is there, but not too much, not too much. It's a light one. It's well, what pairing would you would you think as well? Because I know we have a lot of people foodie here, as well as people that love their um, cigars. So we we can talk uh, if you can recommend some some cognac with food pairing, cocktail, yes. cigar as well. Uh, that that's some something uh, we we would want to know because I think traditionally. People expect to drink cognac, and uh, you know, I was watching a video just before, uh, big balloon brandy glasses, and then uh, swirling like this. But actually, it, it has totally changed, and I think Camus is at the forefront of the innovation in the cognac industry. You have a special finish, podcast finish, Il uh, de as well, that is very special. You just released the, the Camus um caribbean as well that is a very special um so it, it is not an, it's an old industry but you're innovating uh in, in it 
Yes, uh, you know, we have been the first uh, in terms of uh, Finnish. Uh, this, with Hildere, with Hildere uh, we have been the first, it was in 2003, uh, mm -hmm. in this uh, process of Finnish. So we, we was uh, really the pioneer at this time. Oh, yeah. Me, uh, with yeah, pairing. Yes. And the pairing are the best if you want to make a marvelous experience. Oh, try I with want. The oyster. Try with the oyster. You yeah. have oyster. You open your oyster, you eat your oyster, and there is always some seawater remaining in the shell. So at this time, mm. you take your glass, you put in the shell, and you drink straight from the shell. The test is absolutely marvelous. Nuts is there, very, very aromatic, very, uh, very fresh. Very nice experience. It's work also with the sushi. With the sushi, it's perfect pairing. Of course, it's, I just, it's ugly, so it's work with the with this. I had some sushi just before. I wish I had it just now. And I, 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 I yeah, I agree with the, you know, like when we drink the cognac, a little bit like uh, seasoning. You know, like you have a, a little bit of a mouthful of, of food, and then. Uh, a little bit of uh, a sip of uh, cognac to 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 match the the flavor like this uh, what's what's uh, what do you, for for cigar do you think this is too too light for for cigar alors, do you have any opinion on on the uh, cigar matching uh, alors i'm not a cigar smoker but uh, uh, i heard from connoisseur that yeah. it's a little bit light uh, with a cigar uh, it's very light, light because the cigar is is having a, this this powerful. Yes. The cognac, yeah. It is it, maybe too light. This cognac is maybe too light uh, to pair with the with the cigar. Yes, or, it would. Or maybe a light cigar problem. Light, light, light cigar. The, do you do you operate your own vineyard uh, or do you source your other V? From a third-party producer, is this a, a mix of both? What do you think are the pros and cons um, in a, in a cognac uh, making process? How does the influence? For, for Camus, huh? we are talking. Yeah, Camus, Camus, Camus. Yeah, uh, yes. On, do you on, on Ile de Ré? Huh? Yeah. You, you talk about on Ile de Ré. On Ile de Ré, we are in a contract with uh, with the, the totality of the grower. Huh? Yeah, on, yeah. Uh, on uh, but on the mainland, we have our own grapes, own vineyard in the bordery. It represents about mm. 200 hectares. But, That's a big... but we also have a contract with more than 250 vine growers. So it's mm. allowed us to work with all the different areas of cognac, Grand, Petit, Fin Bois, Bon Bois, and Bois Terroir. That's for and our that, elegance. That way you have a, it's like a, a painter. You have a more color to your to to make your your cognac because you, you have the choice of different producer from different area, so you can really blend your con your cognac so it has the same consistency. The um, over over the years, so that would be an advantage. What? You were talking about the Camus Cognac being the first cognac house to do the podcast finish. Did I get that right? Oh, you're absolutely right. That's uh, amazing. It, yes, that's uh, we have been the, the first to 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 make this uh, this finish. Alors, you you know, but in in some words, yeah, there is you you know there is angel chef. Okay, everybody knows yeah. the angel chef phenomenon evaporation. Yeah. But there is another phenomena which is called the devil part. The and devil the part? Devil... Yes. Wow, I never uh, heard about this one. Ah, eh bien, I give you what is the devil part. Can you work with yes. the devil? Because when you use a new oak cask, the wood is dry. So he need to be uh, to, to, to drink him also. And he will take he will take three percent of the the product uh, in the oak cask. For example, you have oak cask 300 liters. The wood will mm -hmm. drink nine liters, and it will uh, keep in the fiber of yeah. the wood. Mm -hmm. And 
Because of this, we have decided to use uh, port cask uh, empty, mm. had cognac inside to extract from the fiber all the port. So you imagine the result. Uh, oh, the yeah. Result, the result yeah. is in I front think of um, I can't wait to go to the podcast finish, but it's just before. Uh, how, what do you think? Because I think this this is a uh, light and, and um, very floral. Is how, what's your opinion on having cognac frozen? Frozen cognac. What's your take on this for this one? I know, frozen, frozen. It's a question cognac. from the audience. <laughs> it's it's a very good experience. It's very good experience. Uh, it's of course another way to to drink cognac because I know you know. Uh, I'm sure that everybody thinks that the perfect picture of the cognac drinker is a guy sitting near the fireplace, exactly. in a hot chair, the newspaper, cigar, and the dog. I'm That's sure we have a couple of people like this watching, but it's, a, <laughs> it's the typical picture, yes. yes. Yeah. But now it's not only that. The cognac is very flexible, and especially yeah, the chemical very flexible and able to be drink at any time, any temperature, any situation. And drink frozen Hildere, for example, it's a marvelous, really marvelous experience. That's so awesome. I, I tried it before, but now with Hildere, and uh, I, I will make sure to put the bottle the same at, at home. If you still have some left, Put it in the freezer because that's gonna change the the texture of the cognac. It's gonna become a bit more thick, I believe, and then after it's gonna warm up with the room temperature and, it, and it's gonna change uh, as it as it warms up. Okay. Um, is there anything else before we move on to the podcast finish? Uh, we're gonna try the podcast finish. Mm. Last thing on the Ile de Ré, if you want to make a good experience, to start a appetizer with the frozen, and you use during all the dinner or the lunch. So your cognac will change of temperature, and you will discover how the cognac is flexible and have interest on each level of temperature. Amazing! You you guys have been doing cognac for five generations. So the, the cognac house is still family owned, which is quite remarkable, uh, considering that uh, it's difficult to pass from one generation to another generation for many reasons. Could be the people, they don't want to handle the business or the tax inheritance, they have different focus, family third, etc. So it's really impressive that the, the Camus family still managed to have its family owned for five generations. So when was the Cognac House uh, Camus created? Was it more than 150 years ago? Can you tell us a bit more? Yeah, 150 years ago, uh, the first Cognac has been created. And, and believe me, from this, uh, from this time, we follow, we follow the same recipe. Alors, of course, yeah. the recipe is evolution, because now we are working uh, in uh, collaboration between the tradition and the high technology to be sure that the, the, the products are, are perfect. But yes, we are working in the same, exactly on the same way, still. And, and you manage to innovate at the same time, keep the very strong regulation, but innovate, like the podcast finish. So maybe you now we can start with the podcast finish. Yes. So for me, it was a good surprise, this one, because uh, the, it has a beautiful color, and I never think about a podcast finish. I was I, I was so excited when I, I heard that Camille was doing podcast finish. Can you uh, tell a bit more about the, the, the alcohol strength, the influence of the cask finish, and how that can pair with cigars? Ah, always this cigar. You are really, uh, you, you are a hard smoker, Alex. I'm not even smoking. But I know in a group there is so many people loving the cigars. So that's why I, I'm asking this question for, for them. I understand. I understand. It's, a, it's, it's always a good question. Alors, I will tell you, you know, the first, first impression on your nose 
And again, use your, your mouse uh, to, to, to have the maximum of uh, uh, development of the aroma. Uh, the red, red fruit is there, of course. Red fruit red because fruit. it's a red uh, port. Uh, so there is a, it's a tiny port, so very concentrated in, uh, in aroma. You ask me about cigar. So here I have, uh, I have an element of uh, answer. A friend of mine, which is a, a cigar smoker, mm -hmm. use a Nicaraguan cigar with the port cask finish. Ah, uh, there you go. You think some name now? That's a good Nicaragua recommendation. More light, more more sweet. Yeah. yeah. So is it like a mild cigar or spicy? No. I'm, I'm a, a novice in cigar actually, so that's why I'm asking. Hello, I, I forgot, I'm sorry, I forgot the name, but the, 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 the cigar smoker will, will understand what I, I Yeah. Mean. His cigar is having the color of the chocolate. Oh, it's a big cigar imagine. with cigar of the black, uh, black chocolate. Well, that's only I can tell in terms of... I'm sure, but, I'm sure the, co <laughs> the cognac, cognac the, yeah, they will be able to find out uh, anyone in oh, the group, for sure. they will be able straight away. Uh, can you tell us uh, how do you d taste this cognac? So if you can walk us through, uh, you know, from the from the eyes, how long before, like how long you need to lay in a glass before consuming 10 minutes, 15 minutes. So you know, like you can have the alcohol evaporate. And if you can just walk us through as well, the, the, the taste, aromas, notes that you can find in this cognac from, from beginning to end. Alors, first, I would tell there is something very important is uh, the level of uh, of uh, of the, the port uh, cask. Yeah. If you put too much, uh, that's the right level. Why? Because the surface uh, of connection, the ratio between the surface of between the volume and the surface of glass is perfect to develop the fruity aroma. If you put more. You will be a mm. little bit, uh, if you put less, it will be too heavy. So that's the right okay. level to appreciate. That's the first information. Just, just like this? Yeah, that just uh, not too much at the middle. What do you, what's your take on balloon glass versus tulip shaped glass? We had uh, some question recently. Some member were asking. The big, the big your... glass, you mean? Yes, the balloon no, brandy uh, glass, the typical from the 80s, 90s, and now it has changed. Hello. Try to forget this. Try to forget. We smash this. it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, why? Because because here here at this part is too big, so you will concentrate all the heavy aroma, and it will be difficult. It will be too much concentrate. The best is this the side, shape. the tulip glass. That's the best. For, the, for, for a degustation, for tasting, yeah? I, I'm, mm. not, I'm not talking about uh, from the freeze or something. Yeah? Okay. But is that the right way to appreciate at the maximum uh, the cognac you, you want to taste? Yeah, this cask finish, I want to say uh, something. So is that, Ryan, you were the, one of the first cognac house to do it. And then, uh, so the, the, the regulation in cognac is really strict. And, and then that might be uh, the, the B and I C. It seems they're not so keen on uh, naming uh, cask finish, unfortunately. So the, the, the positive of this in Australia is that um, you, you, we, we still have the podcast finish. And, and then if the regulation change, then we will have uh, the latest bottle, collector bottle. But that, <laughs> right. So it is a. Fortunately, you can tell that it's collector bottle. Yes. Collect. Gonna be collector. The, you and know, the, the rules is very curious because you are allowed to do that, but now you are not allowed to communicate on it. It's curious. That's the paradox. But you are allowed to, if you don't tell that you do. Yes. So. Yes, we we just have to put some uh, some 
some obvious but not too obvious yeah that that would be interesting uh there is the, how, how are we gonna be able to still do it and the, we have the last drop what do you think so there's a cherry and then um it's fruity right it's a cherry the the color is dark like copper and what do you think I is the taste some notes of uh, ruby Ruby color, just just some nuts of ruby color. Ruby color, yeah. Yes, ruby color. Yes, don't forget that there is a three percent of port in uh, still in uh, oak cask. So, for example, nine liters of port in the cognac. You see. The and then the strength, strength the, of yeah, forty-three. It is a 43% cask strength, and then uh, the. I think it's on a on a spicy on the spicy side, right? When you when you drink it, spicy a bit a bit um, woody as well. What 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 are some of the flavors you would describe when uh, having this cognac? Yes. Alors, this spicy comes from uh, the origin of the cognac. Now, this cognac is the uh, it's um, it's a blend of five uh, five different area yeah one petit, one, 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 one. and this spicy come from the champagne area that's typical for the champagne, mm. to develop the spicy nuts when it is in a connection with the port ah okay so you would have the spicy i have some uh, someone saying as well they can taste some pepper so which will be in a spicy range of of notes. Uh, I got a lot. I think it, I think it is a very popular. Definitely the 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 podcast finish. Mm -hmm. That that's also a work. Uh, it's very chilled. It's it's worked very well. You develop. Alors you will develop. Uh, the, um, I don't know how you, we tell in English, uh, cassis, uh, cassis, du cassis. Uh, uh, yeah, cassis. cassis. Yeah, that's good. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yes. I have to Google this one. <laughs> cassis <laughs> is this. Because in is English, it? I think people would know because it's like sometimes when you make cocktail, there is creme de cassis. So it's, it's the same. Um, it's, it's yeah, like it's people. So you would, you, you would have that. Uh, that, that is a very unique cognac, and then you have another one that we don't have yet, which is the Caribbean Expedition. Ah, the so, Caribbean uh, is a long story. Yes, uh, but just before we go into this story, what, what's the podcast source from? Is it from Spain or is it from, from where? Uh, that's a question that I have, the podcast, because uh, if you can develop yes. a bit more on the podcast, and then we can go to the to the um, bordery that was totally different. Yes, yes. But the, the, the podcast comes from, uh, they are coming from Port, eh? Port Porto. Yeah. Eh? From, yes, yeah. yes. Portugal. And it's a small 220 liter cask yeah. that uh, exactly. Exactly. Uh, we use for the finition. What, what is, um, I have so many questions to ask you, Frédéric, you know. Um, what is so special about Camus? Uh, in a way, the Camus style, you know, the house of the spirit, because you are very big on aromatic cognac, but what does it mean exactly? I know, for example, you are warming up the barrel at the beginning of the aging. What does it do to the cognac? And what are the other elements in, a, in, your, in the Camus cognac making process that allow Camus to offer us very aromatic cognac. Allez, one Allez. answer, the first answer. Oh, sorry, tell me, Alex. It's me? Yes. Okay. Of so course. the first, first parameter is the raw material, is the distillation. That's a wine, and this is the lee. I don't go into detail, but our competitor, they distill this part. Us, Camus, what we do is we blend and we distill this blend. Because 
in this part, you have the maximum of aroma. So first, our aroma, our uh, uh, powerful and uh, intensity come from the leaves and the way mm. to this tea. Okay. Then after aging, why to lose the natural aroma from the wine with the oak? We are not a company to make a juice of oak. We don't want to make a juice of oak. We want to give the priority to from the natural flavor. That's why we use new oak cask, of course, but very short time. I would tell Ali, one, two months, not more. And compared to other, it's, yes. it's very often more than six, seven months. We extract very light, very light, light tannins. Again, the priority is the natural flavor. That's why. We develop the intensity uh, uh, and uh, the true origin of the product because never uh -huh. forget that is a wine so never we have to lose this uh, 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 this uh, this yeah. natural, natural flavor the wine is the, the the key part in in a in a making in a, in a cognac making process it, it all starts with the the wine so you gotta have quality wine uh to to have quality cognac to and then the wine how how is camus because right now we are really big on organic um cognac and then sustainability what are the the steps taken by camus to ensure the uh you're working uh collaboratively in a sustainable way with the nature to produce your cognac Now that's uh, that's called the high value uh, environmental, eh? environmental, sorry. Yeah. And uh, for that, uh, we have uh, a very reasonable uh, use of the pesticide. We try to remove this herbicide also. We try and step after step because it take time, of course, to manage. Again, the natural, uh, natural condition, climatic condition. But for example, mm -hmm. uh, in our vineyard, you will see the grass mm -hmm. and you will see the grapes and no grass. Why? Because we, uh, we manage the hydric stress of the vineyard uh, with the level of grass. We don't kill the grass, we cut mm -hmm. the grass. So it's one example, but it is also uh, uh, we, we, we use this practice for all step of the treatment in our vineyard. So yes, we are not officially organic because that takes time. Mm -hmm. right? Nobody yeah. is like 100% organic, but we are on the way on this organic uh, certification. Okay, that, I love it. So should we? Uh, In, go to the Borderic Camus and then just before maybe so uh, actually I got some comments so the cassis is black current so that's in English cassis black current thank you uh, we, I will remember <laughs> I will try to remember this one uh, do you want to um, uh, because you have recently released the uh, Caribbean expedition and it was a beautiful bottle. I've shared this in Australia. We don't have it yet, but please tell us a bit more about the story, the aging in um, the, the spirit behind this cognac. Okay. So I think you will get on the, the January 21. Huh? Yes, it will be on, uh, on your place on the January on the 20, uh, 2021. Alors, the story in a uh, In short, uh, short war. Uh, on 2018, we have sent from La Rochelle, the port, which is here, port of La Rochelle, we have uh, sent uh, a boat uh, with uh, 15 oak casks. And the destination was the Caribbean, and uh, especially the, the Barbad. Uh, so the, the travel, uh, well, The duration was about two months. And for one month after, the aging process has been in the cellar, in a rum cellar. Oh, you, you, are so you trying to get a rum drinker to the cognac by going into a little bit? It's a beautiful overlap. 
because he's we need to recruit rum drinker whiskey drinker into the cognac world so it looks like there's someone actually saying you are, we are in the rum territory we use the beer of the rum overlap and then yes please go on uh, that's, uh, you, you talk about aging because there was some problem of communication uh, i don't know if i'm right or not we are talking about uh, aging uh, in the barbad yes yeah 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 Yes, it was in a cognac, uh, cognac cask, but aging was on a tropical condition in the cellar of Rome. So what happened is uh, there is a complete change in the process of aging. Uh, the temperature and the humidity, high temperature and high level of humidity have increased uh, the process of aging. The result is a cognac who in one year have taken maybe allez, two, three years of aging. Oh, wow. You imagine? Just because it's a different, uh, it's age in the Caribbean, so it age faster. Yes, because you have to always to keep in mind, there is two process of this uh, of cellar, humid cellar and dry cellar. In humid yes. cellar, you, you know what happened in humid cellar, you increase your process of aging. You lose more. Of course, you lose more. Right? There is more angel share, but the process of aging, the transformation, it's more fast than in a dry cellar. And this is what happened in a, on tropical condition. Cool story. I can't wait to have it 21st of January. We make sure to order bottles and then uh, try that. Yeah. But this bottle is not for yeah. you. I'm sorry, it's for me. Oh, one day, one day, one day. In 2021, we're gonna, we're gonna get it. Just a matter of time. I have to be patient, just like with cognac. Can't rush it. It's coming. Do you want um, Bordery? Bordery yes. is uh, yes. is very well known. Uh, I think Camus is is quite uh, famous for its Bordery. It's one of my favorite crew as well. How is the Bordery terroir different from the other terroir? Oh yes. It's completely different. I talk. Uh, you you can tell that globally here in the uh, in area of cognac, it's a shock. Okay, that's the shock. But here in the center, due to the Jurassic transformation, there is a particularity. This particularity is the flint. The flint are exclusively here on the bordery area. And what happened when you do that with two flint? you have the smell of the gunpowder. And this gunpowder come in a wine like for the Puy Fumé. You know the Puy Fumé? So you can imagine that a wine with the aroma of the gunpowder after the distillation, it's not the same result. The result will be more minerality, more, uh, uh, alors we call mine de crayon. I don't know how it's called mm -hmm. mine de crayon. The pencil, uh, but, uh, the, the end of the pencil, yeah. Yes, this. So that's the characteristic of the mine uh, of the pencil. Mm. The bordery. The second part the characteristic is the violet. And the yeah, violet tell me the violet. Where does this come from? The violet. Should we pour the glass now of uh, bordery and then we can? Uh, yes, and we can. We talk can. The we can talk. I'm gonna do that for you. So you, don't forget you. to open your your uh, lightly your mouth. You will get this aroma of uh, yes yeah, that's a good trick so, and then how um how long should we let the cognac rest in a glass before consuming it is there a recommended time because as it is changing at the beginning that we have a lot of alcohol and then after it, it will uh, evaporate a bit more how, how long would you leave breathe it, it is not like for the wine huh? it is oh, okay. not like uh, only you have to move it to develop and uh, push the aroma into the cheminée. A cheminée. That's why we do that. If you want only the heavy, heavy aroma, you don't move your, your, your glass and you do like this. And at this time, you will have only the heavy aroma. If you do that, okay. you will develop the light aroma. Okay? Yes. Yeah. What are some of the aromas? that you have in the bordery and please share some insights as well for the pairing 
for the pairing with the with this uh, with this cognac. Alors, this cognac work really work very well. Alors, as it is with ice cube, but it's also a very uh, ah. I see also another question coming. You yes. Want... <laughs> like this. Yeah. So what the uh, what the mix? Uh, about the, uh, someone is asking to, uh, now i give you the true story yeah tell uh, us the true story about warming are, the glass you are, we we're are just between us of, uh, uh, we are at the end of the 19th century and unfortunately our vineyard has been destroyed by the phylloxera you know that yes so unfortunately for three years there was no grapes so no wine and again two years there was no cognac because there was no grapes that means for about six years, there was no cognac. Wow. So when the people, they was able to get a glass of cognac, they was doing like this, like a treasure. It was not for the testing, it's only like a treasure because it was so precious. My precious. So this, <laughs> is, the, this is the true origin. And after some people have used this as a way to test, but the origin mm. of the origin is I don't want that somebody take my glass. Because because as well you can see, uh, for example, uh, now some some glasses where it's it's with the candle at the bottom, it's and then it's time. warming up, the, and that candle. make you laugh. Huh? You wouldn't yes, buy that. You don't have that in your home. Huh? No, no, no. That's for the sh that's for the show. I'm sorry, but we no no we don't but we don't use it no. Uh, but why not? Why not? Huh? It's just, there is no the law for the rules for the for testing. But, but no, essentially, it's better to drink the cognac at room temperature. Or at, yeah. at, that, that, that's the best. Uh, so uh, here is uh, the yes. Tell me the the, 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 the warmer uh, the warmer the cognac. I was just going to say the warmer the cognac, the more flavor it really is. Would you agree with this statement or not? Because I think that's what that's what some people are saying that when you warm it up, then that might really is more aromas. Alors, it's true, but unfortunately, unfortunately, you will develop more the wood aroma. Ah, the wood aroma. Okay. Natural. So it's worked with with the cognac woody. Because unfortunately for the consumer, more it's woody, more is old, more is dark, more is old. That's also completely wrong. It is not like that. The color of the cognac yeah. uh, is no. not uh, equal to the, to the age. And the quantity of oak is not also equal to the age. I, you, you know. Yeah, I totally, I totally, no, that, make, that makes sense, but it's good that we cover this. So, no, back to our, our it's a bit, theat yeah, like um, I have Gary Ganis from the, from in the Living or Common saying it's a bit thea theatric, you know, it's like the cliche a bit to do, to do that. Yeah. But now, uh, this, this borderie, tell me, Frederic. Yes. With your own border. words. Yes, please. Hello. This, the VSOP bordery very light, very uh, easy light. To, 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 to consume. Uh, that's work very good in a, very well in a, in a paratizer. Make a try, make a try for a morito with VSOP bordery. You would be surprised. A morito wow. with VSOP bordery is something incredible. Incredible. Why is incredible? Because this powerful, this aromatic powerful due to the flower, due to the, uh, the flint, develop in the cocktail something incredible. That is a very good experience. It's not a rum, of course, but it's very, It's very better good. than a rum. Ah, it is. Yes. <laughs> but yes. to be honest, you know, with the, the, yes. the cognac cocktail, what I found out is any cocktail that use brown spirit, just replace with cognac and then, and then see how it goes. But usually, usually it's good. I've done uh, espresso martinis, uh, mojito, etc. with it. And it's always, it's always a, a, a good surprise. So some, some are, this is a, a lot lighter than the podcast finish, right? 
this this uh, border here a lot finer than the podcast finish. Yes. On this. On the podcast finish, I, I don't agree again. I was saying th this border is a lot lighter than the podcast finish. Of course, of course. And yes, because there is less uh, concentrate of another product inside. It's uh, completely, we are here completely from the wine. And from the wine, 100% from the Camus Vanier. So that means it's uh, <laughs> uh, this characteristic of this wine are very light, very uh, fruity, very aromatic. So that's why nothing to compare with the, the podcast finish. You cannot compare mm. these two products. I even got someone saying it. this 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 VSOP is very unique compared to other other VSOP down the market. It's, it is really special and it has won so many awards. This is alors first is this is the only VSOP uh, bordery uh, and uh, single estate on the market. There is no other, and the bordery himself himself is uh, already. Uh, Typical in terms of uh, in terms of complexity, in terms of aroma, and in terms of the flint and the soil and the climate also and the climate and uh, also also you was talking about the, uh, the the floral aroma and yeah. uh, the floral aroma come from a special molecule. This molecule is on the berries. Uh, at the beginning, it's called. I'm sorry to be technical, but it's important. Be technical, and, yes, please. And, and this is uh, uh, we have identified on the berries the molecule of uh, beta carotene. You know the beta carotene is. I yeah. Bon. and the beta carotene during the winemaking process become another molecule which is called beta ionon, and the beta ionon is a molecule who give the perfume and the aroma to the iris flower and the violet flower. So that's why we have a common molecule with this flower and we can uh. recognize, of course, you cannot use as a perfume, eh? but that's, uh, you can recognize this uh, floral identity. That would be a good perfume though. I, I reckon I buy it if we have a perfume like this. It's very, it's a very, very, very light. And um, I have yes. uh, many people saying uh, in, a, in a comments that it, the minerality of the cognac really clean the palate and then uh it's it's uh it's really good with the uh, matching well with the cigar uh, Alain, i was waiting for your question as i don't understand. Uh, yes it's coming That's that, that, that. Alors, <laughs> which kind of cigar Alors, yes the kind of cigar uh again from my my friend uh, he smoked a Koiba on this. Uh, alors, I don't remember. I, I forgot to write. It's a very light Koiba, a small Koiba, not a big Koiba. Uh, but this Koiba worked very well with this VSOP bordery. Yes. I love it. This one is one of my favorites. So, a small, light Koiba. For food, yes. what food with this one? Because you, we ah. talk about Morito. What yes. would be a good one with uh, some preparing with this one? Because we really want people to drink their cognac, not only by the itself, but like getting people to to try in many different ways. So uh, tell me. If you want to make excellent pairing, you use this at the dessert with the, uh, um, you know, this uh, tart tatin. Oh, yes. And know, with tartatin. tart tatin, hot tart tatin, it's absolutely delicious. It's delicious, but it's oh, yeah. also on the salty, uh, salty uh, food. And this one from the freeze work very well with ah. foie gras. with the foie gras. Foie gras or dessert like a tartatin that has the apple taste. Yes, yes, yes. yes. That's what uh, very <laughs> your friend has very good taste in uh, cigars. I'm reading from the comments. He is a very good, he's a good friend. He's a good friend. <laughs> maybe next time, maybe next time we get him and, and then he I, can, uh, he can uh, do a special Camus cigar pairing. 
Uh, yes, we can do that also. Uh, in, but in the cellar, it's not very safe to smoke the cigar. No, not very safe. <laughs> but uh, we won't do. We don't want to yeah, because actually, he, he, he has been burning before in a Charente. I was reading a book and he was talking about the story and all, all the cognac has as the sprinkler. But that's another story. So now we have only one left. Yes. which is the the XO but before that I wanted to 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 announce the winners of the the ultimate cognac giveaway that we have uh, in uh, in Australia so uh, we we had 10 winners and then the 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 the, the people that the one is based on number of points so the most friend you refer to the uh, the the Facebook group cognac lover australia The more friends you refer to the Camus cognac testing, um, if you're a contributor, the more posts you do into the Facebook group, etc. Based on the engagement, how many friends you refer. So the goal really is to grow a big community of uh, cognac lovers and then to promote cognac and Pinot because I love Pinot as well. I know I don't I don't think uh, Camus you guys doing Pinot right but uh, no we we stopped this no. uh, ten years ago ten years ago but if you have a Camus Pinot bottle and that must be a, a really collector one so the we have the winner so the from from rank number four to number ten is a Pinot testing pack which will include three 60 ml bottle and then. So the name, the winner of this one, uh, let me double check quickly. Okay, so number the, the first one to win it uh, is uh, Christopher Poulos. Christopher, I know you love Hein. I know you were hoping to 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 get uh, the cognac, um, but you gotta get the Pinot. It's really good as well, the Pinot. And then after Matt, Vic, Matt Milanovic, Victor Grunwald, Bernard Cousy, my dad, somehow he, he's in the top 10 as well, but he, he doesn't qualify to win because he's not in Australia. So that's too bad for him, but we ship him something. Uh, Matilda Marseillaise and Wilson Wong, Denis K, Duke Kelly, Victor Grunwald and Emma Grace. So, congratulations. Yes. Then after uh, we rank number three is Benjamin John Fitzpatrick. That is gonna get a cognac testing pack. We see what we're gonna put inside. It will be custom made. So I got a couple of good ones we can discuss. And then um, second and Is a, is a tie with 6,500 points each, Paul Hekal and Evan Binet. So Paul Hekal, he's uh, one of the first uh, member, the first member actually of the Cognac Lover <laughs> Australia that joined. And then uh, he, he, he was on a roll, invited 18 friends. Eva, she invited 22 friends. Um, and then number one, Grand Prize winner is, that you know, Gary Gagnis. He, with 18,250 points, I don't know how he pulled that off, invited 41 friends. He has a, a lot of friends that love cognac, and then invited 25 friends to the Camus uh, event. So, really appreciate it. I will uh, confirm the winner by writing because uh, I think, yes, I want to be over the top with the Pinot. I read, I read the list a bit too long. So uh, some people actually didn't win, but we can arrange something. I will come from by writing. Okay, so Gary, you won the $700 Hein Triumph uh, bottle. Hein Triumph, which is a 50, 55-year-old uh, uh, cognac. And then congratulations, thank you all for the for helping to to promote the the Camus event. You know, get more eyeball on onto the 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 cognac house that are not the big four. That's very important to me. 
sort of, and then to getting more people aware of the Cognac Lover Australia. So thank you very much. Now, nothing for me. I want nothing for me. No, nothing. Oh my God, you make me feel so bad. I'm thinking about what I can, I can do for you. <laughs> I have to come up with something. What can I do to, because you have everything. You're sitting already in a paradis just behind you. It's hard to. It's true. It's true. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> well, so congratulations, Gary. Ah, yeah. He's Paul himself. Okay. The, um, the next. Yeah, next one. The Camus XO Borderism. We finished yes, with the I VSOP. XO. How is uh, this uh, XO? Is this. Did, what, what is your favorite Camus Cognac, uh, Frederic? My favorite Camus Cognac? I would tell there is no favorite Camus Cognac because. It depends of the situation, it depends of the music I'm listening, it depends of many parameters. Uh, each cognac is for each time. Uh, and sometimes you would be surprised, but I prefer uh, the VSOP than uh, the XO and sometimes River. So I'm sorry, I have no special cognac. Uh, uh, no problem, you have nothing to apologize for. I'm with you on this one. Uh, I like, uh, you know, VSOP, I, I, yeah, totally get it. Sometimes you, you feel more like a, a EXO, sometimes more like a VSOP, a cocktail, neat. It really, it really depends um, of, the, of the occasion, of the mood, the weather, well, you know, there's none. But we are in good hand with Camus Cognac. All Cognac are good for any, any occasion, right? Alors, I want to tell you something, Alex, before you ask yeah. me. This cognac yes. works very well with the Partagas number two, so it will be done. Is okay? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> this cognac works yeah. very well with a cigar. Partagas, ah, yeah. no, Partagas number two. Yes. All right. We, we go straight to the point. So. <laughs> you have your answer. So now, in terms of uh, in term of uh, the product itself, alors here we are uh, on another step. Uh, we are, uh, I would term in the process that it's called uh, it's called oxidation. Oxidation means is the the final process of uh, aging. There is three process of aging. The first. The first for the VS is the extraction. For the VSOP is hydrolysis, and for the XO is oxidation. We are in oxidation. And why we are in oxidation? Because on the nose, eh, actually you have your nose on your on the glass, you can get, you can get uh, the aroma of rancio. What is rancio, rancio? Yes, is the, what is rancio? Alors, rancio is the process of oxidation. Take, take the example of the walnuts. Walnuts, when it's fresh, it's not eatable. It's too dry, too bitter. So you have to put on hair and it becomes more old. And after some months, the walnuts become oily. And if you remember, the, 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 the taste of the walnuts is the same which is in the glass due to the oxidation. That's the first. Uh, uh, yes. first uh, you would say that uh, the one nut, you would describe the, the rancho with some one nut tone yes. notes. Yes. Would you, would you have the violet inside, the violet note inside this? No. Uh, less. It much more less because uh, the oxidation can decrease, that can decrease the, the aroma of the violet. It's now more the white flower, uh, the white flower that means more, uh, not so far as jasmine, very lightly, but jasmine and also, also you have a ginger bread, the spicy and ginger bread. Mm. You can, you can get it if you put and don't forget to open your mouth, you will see there is a part of ginger bread here in the glass. Ah, uh, yeah. Eh? And if you put now on your mouth, 
you will see. This your next question will be what which which food it can pair. Alors, you know me too well. You're a French guy. You, you, you are French guy, so you of course you know the mimolette. A mimolette. The cheese extra dry cheese, which is called mimolette from the north of France. Okay, dry mimolette. cheese for this one, yeah. This mimolette or this kind of cheese, extra dry cheese with the yeah. XO pottery, it's absolutely is incredible. Why? Because when your cheese becomes lightly old, it becomes also salty. And this is reverse. Mm. Here it's more soft. Huh? So you can imagine that the, 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 the effect between the saltiness and the sweetness. It's, it's really yes, it's uh, it's um, I can I can I can have the, the saltiness as well as the the sweetness. I have mm -hmm. uh, Benjamin in a comment saying uh, he's picking up on the nose just the mellowness. It's very mellow cognac. Ah, okay. on the... I I see. Yes, I see what you want to tell. It's come from the leaves. Does it? From the leaves, it brings the, the middle. Of the leaves. It's typical uh, that's come from the terpenoid, uh, who are developed during the distillation process. And the terpenoid come from the soil, but bon, I don't want to. Other way we, 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 but I think we, we have again to make another uh, Facebook to, to talk about <laughs> technical. <laughs> other way, you, we can uh, talk about hour and hour. Oh, ah, yeah, we can, but for sure. Um, the dream uh, is to organize a, a cognac tour, Frédéric. So taking people from Australia, group members, and then having overseas trip into France and then visit the cognac vineyard. So when that happens, we can have a discuss that around the table and have some uh, a good time, food, drinks, and discuss. And see ya. Good company. Oh, a cigar, but not inside. Maybe outside no, the cigar. But there is a place in a castle of, in a Camus castle, the Plessis, where we can smoke. We can enjoy the cigar and cognac. Yes, sure. And uh, the the different batch of cognac are they the same? Um, because uh, I got some um, Paul. He's saying that he's drinking an older bottle. Yes. So th this bottle is uh, one of the, the most recent one. And then the packaging is really beautiful. Actually, I have it uh, somewhere. It's, it's a beautiful, uh, but bo disappear. Ah, it's under my laptop, actually. But um, the, the blend the inside step. doesn't change. It's the same over the years, isn't it? No, I don't. I, I'm, oh, uh, tell I me. He's talking about a bottle. Here, he, this part is frosted. I'm right. Uh, the one we have is not frosted, but I know which one you're having. Probably the one he has, yeah, is frosted. Yes, I think that's what you meant. Yeah. So the one we have, eh, sorry, the one he have is six years old. That was from the previous regulation on XO. Ah. This one is ten years old. That's the new regulation, and to 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 prove to the consumer that it's 10 years young, we have also changed the bottle. We have removed the frosted part. So all the bottles without frosted are 10 years old. Ah, okay, because before the legislation to be named XO, it was yes, not it was 10 years, year. yes. six years. And so that has changed. 2018. That makes sense. Okay, awesome. Is there... I think we, we have covered everything. I'd like to stay with you a lot longer, but we already run over time. It's 8.45 here in Australia. Okay, so it's late, little bit late. Is it time to drink cognac? Yeah, it's time to drink cognac. Uh, you have a new range coming up, uh, isn't it? Because you have the elegance range that is uh, going to be finished and you will have a more aromatic range coming up. 
I think you have the dark intense, you have the uh, uh, VSOP intensity aromatic and XO yeah. intensity aromatic and extra uh, and extra uh, dark intense. Yes, that's for awesome. the next. Uh, uh, we are ready. When you want, we can talk about uh, all this product. And this will be on your market on the 2021, next year. With the Camus Caribbean. So that would be perfect. With the Camus Caribbean. Yes. Yes. And, and, and you know, I'm going to ask you, with Camus, Camus Caribbean, what cigar it goes with? Uh, yes. Well. Yes. Oh, of course. For the ah, and not for the end of the year for you. Unfortunately, we will have the Caribbean us, but not for you. You will have to wait to January. I'm sorry for you. It's okay. It's okay. Now we have time. Everybody is very appreciative of your time. Uh, you. That you that you, you managed to, I think, uh, provide a lot of uh, valuable information. I hope. So I hope. it's it's amazing to have uh, someone so knowledgeable from such a prestigious cognac house long established being able to spend time with us discuss and then share the the knowledge of uh, of uh, of cognac so um yeah really grateful for this you're welcome and you know that uh, anytime we are here to to give you the answer it's a pleasure it's our passion it's our uh, it's a family so yeah, family open always the, the door. So you are welcome, of course. You're to welcome. the next sounds good. We're gonna do another one. I hope. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a good Thank rest you, of Alex. the if, Thank uh, you the day. For your attention, Thank everybody. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, it was amazing, um, amazing uh, testing. And then, um, so thank you everybody for for coming tonight, for asking all the questions. I love it. So next next cognac testing will be with Croise uh, Cognac and then 11th of December. So stay tuned for this. I will put some more information out there in the market. But um, same, it's a long established cognac house, um, very prestigious. So it would be, uh, you will not be disappointed from uh, the Grand Champagne. And we're going to try the VSOP Black Legend and then the EXO. And then we all come with a miniature, so proper miniature bottles that are not even available in Australia. So it's very exclusive, come from directly shipped from, from France to here in Australia. So I will share with you more information and uh, I look forward to have a cognac with you in person someday. But in the meantime, thank you for taking uh, by some of your valuable time of all of your busy schedule to spend some time uh, to, to interact and then uh, discuss and drink some, some good cognac. Thank you guys. Santé. And then à bientôt.